Hi, my name is Steve Buckenroth, and today in this video, we're going to talk about multi-engine terms and definitions. The first of these terms is called accelerate stop distance. Now, accelerate stop distance is the distance required to accelerate to a specified speed, that speed being either VR or VLOF, experience an engine failure, and then bring the aircraft to a complete stop. Now, VR, pretty clear, that's our rotation speed, and VLOF is liftoff speed. Now, many manufacturers don't tell you what your, what your liftoff speed is, nor do they tell you what, how it's calculated, if it's calculated off of VR or if it's calculated off of VLOF. And furthermore, aircraft manufacturers are not required to even give you charts to calculate your accelerate stop distance. So, what we have to do as pilots is we have to, we have to apply uh, the prudent man's rule to determine if we're really safe to take off in that airplane at that given weight, at that given temperature on that day. So, what we wanna do is go to the chart, or go to the charts in the performance uh, chapter, chapter five in any gamma standard manual, and look at what our takeoff distance is going to be. And once we determine our takeoff distance, we have to apply some sort of a formula to determine what our accelerate stop distance would be if we lose an engine. However, if we're flying Cessna, Piper, Beechcraft, we can go to the charts and we can get the takeoff distance and we can get the accelerate stop distance. But as I mentioned, if we're flying a Diamond Twin Star, we can go get our takeoff distance, but we have to estimate our accelerate stop distance, and as we talk later, our accelerate go distance. Now, why aren't they included? My guess is probably liability. If, if it's not required by the FAA, they as an aircraft manufacturer have chose not to put it in there. So again, we get our takeoff distance, and then we gotta come up with this accelerate stop distance. Now. What do we use? How do we determine accelerate stop distance? Well, what I do is I look at my takeoff distance and if I go to gross weight and I'm at a, a roughly uh, 70 degree temperature Fahrenheit or less, I apply a multiplying factor of 1.5. So if I've calculated my takeoff distance to be 2400 feet, uh, I apply 1.5 times that distance and state that, you know, even though it was a 2,400 feet, foot distance over 50 foot obstacle, I figure it's gonna take me at least 3,600 feet to stop if I abort the takeoff. And again, that's assuming that I accelerated to VR, which in this aircraft varies based upon weight. We use 72, 73 knots for, um, for our rotation speed. So let's kind of look at the practical side of this again. We gave the definition as it is out of the flying information handbook. We told you that the FAA doesn't require accelerate stop distance be put in the charts. And if it was required to be in the charts, you know, if you look into the regs, the FAA doesn't even require that it be based on flight tests. It can be based strictly off of calculations. So let's take a look at the practical side. I always like to ask myself, what does that mean to me as a pilot? Not getting caught up in all the, all the definitions. So if my takeoff distance is 2,400 feet, and I'm at gross weight, standard day, maybe, maybe even up to 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna take my takeoff distance over 50 foot obstacle, that's how I'm gonna do it, multiply it by 1.5, and that's my accelerate stop distance. So 2,400 foot takeoff became a 3,600 foot accelerate stop distance. So I need to make certain that if I accelerate to 72 knots, lose an engine, that I can apply the proper critical action and you know go ahead and abort the takeoff and then get stopped within the remaining distance of the runway. So I'm figuring hot day for the most part 3600 maybe as long as 4000 feet to get stopped in the Diamond Twin Star. 